So, I have these tiny little 1 liter HP ProDesk mini PCs, and this particular one is the G1 version with a Haswell CPU. And in here I have a Core i5-4690S CPU that's been undervolted using throttle stop, but as you can hear right now, it's still quite loud under full load. So I set out to try and make them quieter, but I've replaced the thermal paste and tried like directing the airflow through the heatsink better and stuff, and the CPU does run cooler, but they're still ramping up the fan really high. And that's when I found out while messing with another one of these that the fans kind of ramp up depending on the motherboard temperatures. Which is a problem because the VRMs on this thing does not actually have a heatsink. So in this video, I'm going to try and fix that by heatsinking the VRM to the case as well as on the heatsink. So the first thing I do is just open up the case and it's really as simple with these systems. There's just a single thumb screw at the back and you can slide the whole top cover off. And these are really meant to be easily serviceable because these are business desktops that are supposed to be in office environments with an IT team taking care of these things and needing to take care of dozens of them at a time. So that makes sense that they're trying to make this easily serviceable. And once you open it up, you can see the SSD is right on top. And in this case, I don't mount it with anything. So I'm just going to unplug it and take off the hard drive tray, which is included in this thing. Although you might not get the hard drive trays if you buy them used and sometimes they don't include them. And after taking that off, now I have to take off the heatsink, which you can see is kind of like a server-esque design with a really shallow fin depth, but a really wide profile all around the top of the CPU. And it only uses three screws that has a number on them that marks which one to take off and install first, one, two, three, but it really doesn't matter. What matters is that you should not tighten one fully before you do the other ones. But yeah, it's really simple to take this thing apart and once you take off the heatsink, you can see the CPU right under it. And the CPU is in a socket because this is a fully desktop system that uses a socketable CPU that you can technically upgrade to the highest end Haswell CPU. It's just that you're probably going to be limited by the 35 watt TDP limit that's enforced by the BIOS. Well, it's not really a TDP, but it's more like a current limit. So even with this CPU, after lots of undervolting, the Core i5-4690S does not go above 35 to 40 watts at most. So yeah, here's the problem. It has a two-phase VRM for the CPU, which is fine because Haswell has an integrated voltage regulator. So this thing just needs to supply very little currents at just 1.8 volts. So it doesn't really have to do too much work, but two VRM phases under a heatsink that's not connected to it and there's basically zero airflow through them is quite a problem even though they are quite overrated at 35 amps each which the CPU really doesn't need at just 35 watts. So what I'm trying to do is try to use some thermal pads to heatsink it to the bottom of the case as well as eventually to the heatsink as well. And I've tested it out and it works pretty well. So now I'm just taking off the motherboard here which just requires two screws and this is something that's kind of weird as well that I found out the chipset is on the underside and you can see that I still have some remnants of thermal pads from my testing previously using thinner pads which didn't work out too well. So yeah, I'm gonna thermal pad that area as well as the chipset onto the bottom of the case. Which you can see the chipset actually lines up to this kind of like indent on the bottom case which is closer to the chipset. I'm not sure if they were supposed to use a thermal pad at some point but then realized they didn't really need to cool the chipset. But because I bought some thermal pads, I'm gonna do that anyways. Now, yeah, here you can see the bottom side is, well, quite populated because this is quite a small motherboard and it's a compact system. So they do have some uh, capacitors and stuff behind the VRMs as well. So I got to use some clever cuts on the thermal pads to make it fit under there while still contacting the metal plate down there. And it does seem like I do need to stack some thermal pads, even though I'm using three millimeter thick pads, which are pretty thick, but it seems like I need to double stack them to actually reach the bottom cover. So what I'm doing here is just sizing it up and making sure it aligns to the VRMs and just cutting it out to size. It's pretty simple and I've done this on another system, which is quite successful. It actually drops the fan noise as I'll explain later, which is quite interesting because it seems like this system is really, really dependent on the motherboard or VRM temperatures more than the CPU. So putting on the first thermal pad onto the VRMs, I'm just going to put it beside the caps so it covers the area behind the MOSFETs and drivers by heat sinking them to the bottom case. And I do have to double stack it because it's not tall enough because the motherboard is raised quite high from the standoffs on the case. 
as you can see by the uh, capacitors being about the same height as one stack of thermal pad. So with that done, let's just continue putting thermal pads onto the other components as well. Here you can see I put thermal pads on top of the capacitors as well and now it's all dead even with the uh, MOSFET side of the thermal pad. And now I'm going to also put thermal pads on the chipset, which is probably quite unnecessary because these chipsets don't use that much power at all. They don't really do much. And that's probably the reason why HP didn't think they need a heatsink. But I'm going to do it anyways because I do have the thermal pads on hand and it's quite easy to do, especially because it has like an indented space on the bottom cover, which makes it so it'll reach the uh, chipset without needing like triple layer of thermal pads or anything like that. Now, the last place to put a thermal pad on the bottom side is behind the CPU socket itself. I know it's not really like directly connected to the CPU, so I'm not sure how much this will help, but I feel like any bit of extra cooling help for a really tiny system like this that's only one liter in size is going to be good for it anyway. So I'm just going to put some thermal pads right behind the CPU socket. And I just hope that the conduction of heat from the CPU through the pins to the PCB itself and then now to the heatsink back portion of the case is going to help make it run a bit cooler as well and hopefully slightly quieter. But like I said, the fan seems to be more focused on cooling the motherboard than the CPU itself. So basically I just sized them the same size as the CPU socket and cut out a small edge of it just to so that it fits in the uh, indentation in the case. And I do have to double stack it so that it actually reaches the back of the PCB. Now I just have to put the motherboard back into the case and that's actually just super simple. Everything is in one piece. It's basically a single board computer. So I would say if you're actually looking for something like a Raspberry Pi or a small computer and you want to do some kind of custom uh, mods to it, like a custom case or putting it in some remote or something, you can actually just take apart one of these one liter PCs and they're going to be way more powerful than a Raspberry Pi if all you need is something for compute. Obviously, if you need the GPIO pins and stuff, then a Raspberry Pi would make a better single board computer than one of these. Now what I'm going to do is put thermal pads on the front side of the MOSFET. That's the part that's under the main heatsink for the CPU so that it can actually conduct some heat to the main heatsink as well. And they're quite tiny, so I'm just going to have to cut small pieces into small squares. And I kind of seem like I have to stack like two of them as well for them to actually reach the heatsink because the PCB and the MOSFET is way below where the CPU IHS is, which means it's way below where the heatsink actually meets the CPU. So it does need quite a thick thermal pad to do that, but I've tried it and it does help. It cools the whole PCB better by doing this as well as on the bottom. So it does make it quieter. So finally, I'm just putting on the thermal pads as well on the uh, chokes as well, besides just the MOSFET because they do get a bit warm. They don't really make that much heat, but they help conduct heat off of the motherboard as well if you heat sink them. So I'm just doing this because I'm already putting thermal pads anywhere that I can anyway. So why not, right? And well, finally, I'm just using a really thin like 0.5 millimeter thermal pad just to put over all of the random thermal pads that I put all over the place there because even the two, three millimeter thick thermal pad seems to be not enough to actually reach the heat sink. So I have to bridge the small gap with a really thin thermal pad as well to actually contact the heatsink. And it does still conduct the heat to the heatsink pretty well, judging from the lower fan speeds. And finally, just cleaning off the CPU IHS as well as on the heatsink as well, so that I can apply a fresh layer of thermal paste. Which is, you know, it's important to have a semi-clean heatsink and CPU, although I'm using alcohol here to wipe it off. You don't really need to, in my experience, a bit of thermal paste left behind. It's not really gonna hurt anything, so you just have to have at least a quick wipe of it so it's actually fresh enough for a new uh, paste application, but you don't have to have it super clean with the alcohol anyways. But yeah, that's how it looks. It just has a thermal pad as well as a clean CPU. And just putting back the fan now before actually installing the heatsink and covering it all back up. 
And the fan is quite annoying to install because it has to fit in this groove in the back. And there's the screw post as well, that's kind of in the way, so I kind of have to force it in. And speaking of the fan, it's kind of a weird design as well on the first revision of the Pro Desk. In that you can see it's on the back of the heatsink, sucking air from inside the case under a shroud, which is supposed to direct airflow through the heatsink, and then blowing it straight out of the case. And this is the complete opposite of the newer ProDesk PCs, where they have the fan in front of the heatsink, and then the heatsink is butt up against the back of the case, blowing hot air straight out, which is kind of more like how laptops do it, and I guess that's the more efficient way to do it, because this was their first revision, and on their second revision, they immediately changed to the fan pushing through the heatsink instead of the fan pulling through the heatsink like this one. But yeah, just installing the heatsink now, just lining up all the posts, and then just have to screw them in in the order that they labeled here, one, two, three, just to make sure the pressure is evenly spread across the CPU IHS. And now for the fan power cables as well, because I, you know, you can't forget that, otherwise it'll overheat immediately as well. And the speaker cable at the front, and finally the hard drive caddy as well. It's pretty simple, just three screws as well on this one. And I love how HP uses Torx screws for this, because really, Torx screws are the superior screw designs compared to the Philips screwdriver heads that we've been using for PC building over the years. And I can't understand why no one can just you know, make their PC components using Torx screws because they're just way superior. So I feel like all the PC manufacturers should just switch to using Torx screws for everything, which seems like what Noctua is doing in their NHP1 CPU cooler. But yeah, you can see now the thermal pad is actually contacting the heatsink, so it should help a bit with cooling the VRMs, as well as not just the CPU cooling. And for helping it cool even better, I'm just gonna put some thermal pads on top of the heatsink to also conduct heat to the top of the case as well. Because, you know, every bit of extra cooling you can get in such a small space as this is gonna help quite a bit as well. Especially, again, if you put a higher TDP and clock speed CPU than you're actually supposed to, like I did here. So every bit of extra cooling is appreciated. It's really simple, I just used two strips of 0.5mm thermal pads, and it seems to be enough to bridge the gap between the cover and the top of the CPU heatsink. So yeah, it does make the top super hot and maybe even scalding hot that it can burn your hand. So. So just, I guess, don't touch it while you're running something heavy on the CPU, but otherwise it does help cool the CPU a little bit. So what is the end result of all this? Well, as you can hear right now, after I ran some Cinebench as well for almost 30 minutes, just the same as the first run, it's quite a bit quieter. It might not sound that big of a difference on camera, but trust me, it's a big difference. The fan is less whiny because it's running at a lower RPM, and combined with you know it outputting actually lower dBA noise levels as well, it's quite a bit more bearable at full speed. And also, another plus is that the CPU doesn't actually thermal throttle because of the VRMs overheating as well, which I didn't show happening in the first part because my room is running with AC on and it's cold, but if I'm running the PC in an unair conditioned room, it does actually thermal throttle because of VRMs overheating. And after doing this mod, I've never seen that happen in either of my HP mini PCs anymore. So I'm gonna say that it actually works in helping cool the VRMs and that also helps lower the fan speeds as well, which is quite a big plus if you're actually using this as a normal desktop. But yeah, I thought this would be a pretty interesting video to share.
and thank you for watching. If you do enjoy this video, maybe leave a like and maybe click subscribe to see more videos of me taking things apart as well as reviews and unboxings and more PC guides as well. Thanks for watching.